That's the feeling we've all had. How new shoes would make you glad, but the best time you recall when you wore no shoes at all. Back the day. We've got our first sunny day for a number of days. I think it's been close to a week since we last emptied our jugs of sap and they're getting pretty full although it's been cloudy and kind of cold the last you know week or so and so the sap hasn't been running usually it runs a lot more when it's sunny out and since we haven't been getting sun it's not doing that much um, but we're looking forward to doing a pretty good uh, sap haul today last time I think they got like 30 gallons or so and the time before that we got 90 gallons so it's it's tallying up and I'm glad that it hasn't gotten so warm that it's triggered the trees to come out of dormancy. You know, one of the basic tenets of sustainability is uh, not having an impact on the environment and what we're doing now, tapping these maple trees, uh, we don't have to till the ground. Um, what we're taking our harvest from is natural habitat and so we're not disturbing these trees, we're not disturbing the habitat at all and we're getting a product that can take the place of sugar that we might get from a tropical region. So it takes a lot of food miles out of our diet and then obviously it tastes really good and we know where it came from too. So you can't really go wrong. One of the things about maple syrup is normally it's made from sugar maples. Allison was talking about that in a previous, the previous video that I made. And we can't grow sugar maples down here in northeastern Missouri. We're, we're sort of on the edge of the south, but still it's a little bit too far south for sugar maples to thrive here. So they don't really naturally reproduce and you can't find them in our woods, but uh, silver maples are just abundant and they reseed themselves like crazy. And I think the, the proportion of sap to syrup is like closer to 50 to 1 versus the 40 to 1 for sugar maples. So sugar maples have a lot more sugar in the sap, but since we can't grow sugar maples here in Missouri, then we can tap these silver maples and you can do it much farther south, wherever the range of silver maples is, you can tap them and get get syrup. It's a little bit trickier, I think, because the springs are different. And I think up north, you get sort of a longer cold period than we would here. And so we have a shorter, we'll definitely have a shorter time when the sap is running to be able to harvest. But, you know, in past years, we've gotten 1,100 gallons of sap in a season, and that makes 20 gallons or more of maple syrup, which is a lot of a lot of sugar to eat in a year. I gotta have a taste. <laughs> Looks so good. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's good. Hasn't started to ferment yet. Nope. Good. So one of the great things about this maple syruping effort is that it's totally cooperative. We work with Sandhill and the people at Red Earth Farms and at Dancing Rabbit. I'll keep track of our hours when we go out and we set up the taps and we collect sap and then we take everything down and clean it up. We're keeping track of our hours and at the end of the season we uh, dole out this maple syrup product in proportion to the hours that we worked. We give Sandhill a portion for boiling down the sap into syrup and then we each get a proportion of, of maple syrup based on the number of hours that we work. So we're pouring the fresh sap into this large pan 
And there was already some boiled down maple syrup from our previous trip in here. Just a thin layer of it, maybe like quarter to a half inch of maple syrup filling up this entire pan. And we pour it through this little screen so that we can get all the bugs and everything out of it. We ended up with 110 gallons of sap for this run. Which is pretty good. I think the most we've ever gotten is 120 something. When it's boiling, it goes above there. But when it's not boiling, it should be below so These are our sap totals so far. In gallons. This is the Sand Hill Sugar Shack, which we're using to boil down our maple sap, but they use it mostly to boil down sorghum syrup, and they have a sorghum processing machine up here. So they grow sorghum here and then they grind it down and then all the sorghum uh, juice goes down into this sugar shack and they've got a steam system that boils it down. Now with our maple syrup, we just use wood underneath that pan and that's good enough because it's such a small amount that we're doing, especially this year since it's been such a poor year. This is all wood that they harvest off of their land. They've got a lot of land and they have a good wood lot operation where they, all the wood that they use to make their products comes on their land, comes from their land. There's a delicious sweet smell of maple syrup in here. It looks like the pan is boiling. This is where they feed the fire. They've got these long logs. They stick in there to make a really long fire. So you can see up there in the trees that the buds have broken and there's actually some green up there, some leaves already starting to sprout. So that means that the sap is slowing down and it means the end of the sap season and the beginning of the rest of the season. Well it's been a long time coming but the syrup is ready and I'm gonna put it on my pancakes and in my tea. You can pour it out here and show you what it looks like. Put some in my tea. And then of course, stir this. And of course I'll put it all over my pancakes. Mmm. Delicious. Of course I know it's all local. Mm. It may be living simply, but you can't say it's not living large. Where else can you get local, sustainably produced maple syrup and have tea with local organic raw milk? You look pretty good here. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour through our maple syruping operation here at Dancing Rabbit, a collective effort to bring in locally, sustainably produced sugars. And also, obviously, delicious sugars. Um, don't forget to uh, share and like this video. If you give it a thumbs up, it really makes a difference as far as uh, bringing traffic to my channel. So I'd appreciate it if you do that. And also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do that as well at the end here. And thanks for watching. Oh. Whoa. Well, that is not a good place to practice guitar. But it is a good place to store root vegetables. Um, that may be the first and the last time you hear Climax Blues Band coming from a root cellar. Um, today I wanted to talk to you about this uh, great floor root cellar that I put into the floor of my the foundation of my house when I was building it. I chose this part of the foundation because it was the deepest part and there's it sort of goes down.